Awesome, guys. Cam and Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? So I'm really excited for this because we've got a lot of history to dive into here. So uh, Cam and Sean, give us a little bit of background as we jump in just about yourselves, your entrepreneur journey before we jump into Keep Nature Wild and your exit that you guys just had. Give us a little background here. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cameron here. Uh, so a little bit of background on me. Uh, married, went to school, came home to Arizona, became a teacher, uh, taught uh, freshman kids, taught seventh grade kids, little turds. And then uh, during that time of teaching, uh, started a little content business called Arizona Hikers Guide. And the Arizona Hikers Guide turned into uh, Keep Nature Wild. Uh, and during that transition is where Sean and I, uh, Sean is my brother-in-law, we started um, in his basement actually just cranking, uh, doing our mission statement, our values and things. So that's, uh, that's my journey from, from teacher uh, to entrepreneur and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Sean uh, here. My, my background's uh, pretty scattered. Um, I've started and, and tried multiple things from a Froyo shop in my parents' bakery that uh, inevitably didn't work out to uh, a, a tech startup trying to revolutionize concert merchandise uh, while I was going to school at BYU in Provo. Um, and moved back to Arizona uh, in 2014, I believe, and started uh, doing photography and videography. That's uh, my background, what I studied, and uh, would go out with Cam and Cassie on these hikes and, and take photos and, uh, and things and started seeing just the turnout that they would have at these group hikes on Black Friday with like 150 people <laughs> showing up and just crazy people like fangirling, grown men fangirling over Cam uh, about his <laughs> blog and, uh, and just seeing this community starting to grow uh, in the desert, you know, uh, hiking um, and just wanting to be a part of it. And, and Cam and I sat down, like he said, and started working on mission statement and values and kind of what we envisioned and then it just kind of really organically naturally grew from there that's so awesome as as the listeners know uh, we're diving into keep nature wild right so um you guys are brothers-in-law so first off that you guys are still friends and still work together <laughs> you had a successful business that's that's tough if you ever yeah, cool. family there's there's lots of moving nuances with that for sure and yes. you know then you get their spouses in and that's just that's just the way oh they yeah oh yeah <laughs> um so awesome so you guys launch your business you're running this keep nature wild you've got a huge following you guys do some really unique things of like you know, you have like thousands of brand ambassadors who go throughout, you know, the U.S. and the world and are actually cleaning up trash. And basically it's, it's, a, it's a brand all focused on, um, you know, keeping nature wild, right? So walk us through a little bit of just the journey of how you built the business, hired that first employee. Uh, you know, why did you take certain risks? What, you know, any of those things that could come up during the growth of the business? Yeah, I, the, the, the nice thing about the business was that it was never really meant to make money. We weren't really ever uh, excited about that. We were much more excited about the community and the potential of getting uh, people to come out, clean up, hang out, meet Sean and I, and become friends. And that's, that was really exciting. When we really pivoted from doing hiking adventures to cleanups, uh, that's when we, uh, that, that, that was the most exciting part of the business for us. And, um, the, the sales were always secondary. In fact, that was part of our mission statement was that selling is always secondary. It was what yeah. fueled the, the cleanups and the, uh, and the, the volunteering. And, and so that, that for me was the biggest impact. Um, Sean, you can probably talk about hiring the first employee, moving out of the basement. And uh, Sean, Sean is, we're such a good compliment because I'm, I'm a little bit more conservative, uh, financially minded. 
I don't like taking bigger risks. I like going slow. And, and Sean is exactly the opposite. So Sean uh, helped hire the first employee and get, get out of his basement and really move fast. So uh, Sean, yeah, tell us about yeah, get, yeah. getting that first employee and getting out. Yeah, I think uh, we, were, we were fortunate uh, that we had, I had a little studio space uh, in downtown Mesa where I would do, run my photography business out of that I'd kind of partnered with some other photography friends. So it was like a, it was like a studio and then I just had an office uh, off of it. And, um, and that's where I think we had our first interviews <laughs> instead of in the basement, you know, they come to our, come to our basement where we would <laughs> fill orders out of, we luckily had this kind of a makeshift office space where I think we had our first interviews. Um, and I think it was just kind of organically like, uh, cause the first, I'd say six months, Cam and I were both full-time at our other jobs. And so we'd work on this on the side. We'd, we'd try to, um, you know, get in and get as much done as we could during the evenings. And then on weekends, go do pop-ups and markets and, and different things. And then, um, and then, yeah, our first hire was a customer service uh, rep named Jillian, who, uh, who, I, the, I mean, she was living in Tucson at the time, somehow convinced her mom or her sister to go pick her up in Tucson, drive her back. She just started school like two weeks earlier, saw that we had posted about it, was like, yeah, I want this job. So drove up from Tucson, came into our office. She was like 18, just fresh, uh, you know, out of high school, basically, and just fills the room with her, uh, with her excitement and her presence and and we were hiring for a customer service role and we're like, yes, you, you are the, like, if, if that's how you can respond to an email and how you just talk and, and show up and she's our longest, I mean, technically she's still a, a, a work for hire type employee, like wrangle her back in when we can. But uh, that was kind of, I feel like a turning point for us is starting to figure out how to hand off uh, jobs and, and find people who are just better at, Thing, like she just exuded this kind of presence and, and ability to respond to, you know, customer service, either issues or questions or whatever it might be. And that, that Ryan is like, that really was a turning point for us. Cause I, I had never really been an entrepreneur and, and I know Sean had, but like, that's a big deal because we were trying to do everything by ourselves. Yeah. And that's my, that was my MO is like, oh, we can do this. Like we can save money yeah. and do this. And once we hired that person and that stress relief of having to answer every email and complaint and thing that was lifted, it was like, oh, this is awesome. Like we, <laughs> let's keep doing this. Let's, let's go, let's do more. And so that, that for me at least was like, this is real. Like we we're paying someone else to do something. And that's when it became uh, kind of like a game on. It was like, okay this it it proved its worth we 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 validated it it's no longer a minimum viable product we it's sean and i and jillian and we got this yeah i love yeah, that and i think i, I just oh, love sorry, that your first tire was like a, a customer service right because that's actually going to be one of the biggest drains and i think there's like there's two pivotal points i see in entrepreneurs with their with their journey it's like when they hire their first employee and they realize they don't have to do everything themselves <laughs> And then the second piece is when they make their first dollar online, right? I always feel like it's game changing. Like you can yeah. sell something online and it like gets deposited to your bank account. That's crazy. Crazy. Totally. Sean, yeah. uh, Sean and, and Ryan, you probably know the, of your phone in the earlier days when you would make a sale on Shopify and it would do the little ching. Oh, God. You remember the, that? Yes. That's when that, remember that? Yes, and that, yeah, was, when it was, that was really like, you, you're saying, Ryan, the, when you make your first dollar online, yeah, we started with Shopify, and we didn't know much about it. We downloaded the app, and we kind of were dinking around, and when you hear that cha-ching, you're like, what? Someone bought something. Who this did that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you check to see if you know them, like, oh, yeah, totally. buddy. <laughs> Was that my mom? She bought yeah. something. All right, first customer. Seriously. Yeah. So and uh, I, I've never yeah. turned that off. You always just want to keep that on. So 
I, well, I love that. And so, you know, with this, with this podcast, we talk about all things buying and selling, right? And so let's fast forward a few years, business is going well, you guys are growing great. And you're like, okay, like maybe we should sell this thing. Walk us through how that conversation went. You have a partnership, you have two different families, two different goals, always moving pieces. Like how did you guys decide to sell? And then, you know, how did that conversation start between the two of you guys? Yeah, it's well, because it started with me, I, I'm, uh, we saw the success of the company. We saw how fast it was growing and how many tens of thousands of volunteers that were showing up uh, yearly for us. And uh, I knew in my entrepreneurial journey that it would take significant risk and significant um, skill to to move to the next level of business and Sean and I had been working and grinding for five plus years as as brother-in-laws as best buds as you know our our you know my wife is his sister we were you know Sunday dinners together etc so we knew that there was going to be a time when when things would start changing lives would start growing apart uh, Sean uh, having children, us planning to have a family, wanting to maybe move away from Arizona and 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 start a different kind of life. And I think that's really was the the transition point for me was we we built this as as best as I knew how, kind of winging it from the get go, and um, have you know creating something special to us. And then uh, yeah, I think one night Sean and I sat together and I told him that dude, do you. I think maybe this might be the beginning of the end, you know, is this, is this something that we should maybe start considering? And then, and then it just kind of naturally flowed into, yeah, I think that we have a sellable business and I think that we could um, get a premium for it because it's really a, a, a good, it was a, it's a solid, good business. Yeah. I think uh, through in that process, we had been, I think leading up to that meeting, we had a mentor, uh, Jesse, who really uh, helped us throughout the business in various ways. He has a background in finance. And so it was, was even before this conversation was helping us uh, really understand cash flows, really actually have uh, pro formas to, to just better understand our business and, and where money was coming in and going out. And we were, especially through COVID, we really had to like, find those dollars, track them. And we had conversations leading up to this of <clears throat> hitting that point and saying, okay, we need to, we'd seen brands uh, that were a year to three years older than us that had kind of taken that next step up. They had, they had pushed through and kind of were, were getting into that uh, higher tier uh, uh, e-com brand, just a larger presence. And, and so we knew that it would take significant effort, significant hires, significant resources. We started talking about, do we, do we create an advisory board? That's something I had, I had had the luxury of having a, a previous startup and, and okay, maybe we just need a, a bigger network and, and you know, uh, broader perspectives or do we need to bring on funding or, or additional partners? And so we, we kind of started having this conversation of seeing that inevitable next step and then and then uh, and then I think evolving and, and Cam bring it to me but just also I think we were at that point of knowing that to push through it was going to take significant effort and um and so we just started kind of to reach out in all directions like let's let's take a shotgun approach let's keep moving down the path if we found funding or you know the the books and, and improving the books and being better with our numbers would help with whatever path if we go and raise money or if we sell the business. And so uh, through that process, we, we found uh, a really great group that was interested in buying and, and a few uh, people, yourself included, Ryan. And, um, and then it just kind of from there very naturally evolved into, okay, this could, this could be something real. And if, even if we don't sell the process of selling, was invaluable, you know, to really look at our business and, and see where we could improve it. Yeah. I love that on a couple of different fronts. And I, first off life changes, you know, you had lots of yeah. different changes and knew that, Hey, you know, not every business you do is going to be the one you're doing for 40 years and that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
and you can still look back at a brand that you put your heart and soul into and say, you know, it's getting, it's getting put into the people with the right hands to take it to the next level. And then I, I love that you said, you know, Jesse, you had a mentor in, in there. And I, um, a lot of times like people who have a normal day job or don't have, don't run their own business, they don't understand the power of an, of a mentor. And so mm-hmm. whether you, you uh, run your own business or, you know, you have a job, whatever it is, you still need someone that can, can, can see unemotionally what is happening in the business and say, Hey, I've yeah. done this. You're on this path. These are the things you need to do. These are the things you need to think about. And then you all have in the where with all to, to discover that like, Every business, in order to get to the next level, requires another level of effort, skill set, or and really capital too, right? You have to have some sort of level. That's why companies raise money, or that's why mm-hmm. you know people are brought on for certain skill sets. And it's not that you couldn't develop those, but sometimes you're just like, this isn't the idea I'm going to continue on. Or you know what? I really like that stage in the first few years when I'm building something. Or I really like, you know, this aspect of building, but I, you know, once it's from, you know, one to 10, I don't want to take it from 10 to 50 or 10 to a hundred yeah. else can do that. And I think that's okay. Um, it doesn't always have to be so defined that you have to come in and do everything yourself and, and know that you're going to be there forever. So I love like those on a couple different levels, because I've seen it on my own businesses where I had an e-commerce business in order for me to take it to the next level, I had to work more than five hours a week. And that was not the business I wanted to work more than five hours a week in. And so mm-hmm. someone else took it over, bought it, moved on and, you know, continues to crush it and take it to the next level. Um, so you, you brought up something here and I was going to talk about this is um, we have an episode where Lewis and I, Lewis Fawcett and I, I don't know, six months back actually do an anonymous deep dive in your business on the show. So I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, the reason I bring that up is we were, we were some of the buyers. So well, yeah. just, just uh, you, you talked about taking, taking your business and, and putting it on the market and how much you learned about your own business. Tell us a little bit about that and like how those initial conversations went with buyers. Yeah, I think I think interesting as you were talking to, I think looking back and we, we started to look back to towards the end of the process as it was getting closer and closer of like, and even now, three or four months later, looking back, I think we're very fortunate of having that intuition of uh, maybe this is a good time and, and like that maybe, you know, our like you said, our relationship is still great. We're still good friends. We still, you know, I think everything came together in such a, uh, a fortunate kind of way and and part of that is yeah saying to our mentor the same jesse uh who who we talked with uh, about helping us with our books he actually posted on linkedin like hey uh, in an anonymous way i have this e-com business that, that may be looking to sell are there brokers it, it really wasn't even a uh hey these guys are looking to sell who wants to buy it was more here here's some some brief info on this e-commerce brand. They're looking to find a broker or someone who's done this or, or find a space where uh, they can get help. Cause we were, we had met with a few brokers. We, we were just trying to see, okay, if we go the path of a broker or is there anyone else that can really help provide insight that really understands our, our business. We met with like kind of local Arizona brokers who deal with more, you know, local laundromats or or something, restaurants. And then then we met with some big like e-com, you know, but we were kind of smaller. And so, uh, so Jesse actually suggested to us, Hey, um, maybe I'll, I'll just post it out to my network. See if anybody can just give an added set of, of eyeballs. Um, and through that process, I think that's how we connected with you, I believe, or maybe Cam had, had known you, but a few people reached out and were like, Hey, I might be interested not in just helping you connect. Like I may be interested in being a buyer. And so it kind of, again, a very fortunate, just very kind of organic way of coming together. Uh, through that post, we actually found, uh, the, 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 the buyers we, we took, I think six or seven phone calls, uh, from that. And then kind of a network effect of, of that, um, and started the process of like, okay, this could be real. Let's really start talking through with these uh, various buyers on our business. Let's, let's really put together our numbers and make sure we, we know really where we're at from, from a financial standpoint, but also what we are selling and, 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 and the benefits. And again, we were looking for a win-win. We were looking for people that not just couldn't just, just write us a check and we could move on and we could kind of wash our hands. We wanted a win-win where, 
they could really understand our community, our mission, uh, our team, uh, and the value that the team brought and really just, just vibe uh, on a personal level. And, and, and fortunately we, we found that. Yeah. yeah we, uh, go ahead, Cam. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. Uh, I was just going to add to it. Go ahead. I, I, I think that shows the power of a mentor helping us <laughs> yeah. and the power of network. Uh, once we, I mean, it was within 24 hours that we got, I don't know, maybe a dozen inquiries without a broker and we're thinking to ourselves, wow, this is, this is real. And once we found the, the ultimate buyer, um, it, it went very fast from there. And it was, it was a very easy relationship. They, they have apparel brands themselves. It was a very natural progression. They knew all the things that we were talking about. They run their own warehouse. We ran our own warehouse. So that, that symbiotic relationship, it was just so easy. It's such an easy marriage uh, between uh, the buyer and, and us. And yeah, it, it just went, it went smooth. We, I think maybe we got lucky. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it was, it was, uh, it was easy. There's, there's a lot of luck involved. They don't always go that smooth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. So, and one thing I want to, you know, be up clear about is, you know, we actually, Lewis and I, Lewis Fawcett and I jumped on some calls with you all. We were a little bit late to the process and you had some initial discussions and we ended up putting an offer on your business. And when we submitted the offer, Lewis and I said, I don't think there's a very good chance they accept our offer. And because what we realized is um, we had an e-commerce background and we, just because all e-commerce isn't the same though, like you, you built a community in an apparel brand and had a warehouse and all these different pieces where we had some of the pieces in place, but not all of them. And so even though it was a wonderful business, it wasn't worth as much in the hands of Lewis and I than it was to the eventual buyers or, you know, whatever it is, right? They, they had the natural uh, structure, the systems, they had the infrastructure set up so that they could take this over and take it to the next level. Whereas Lewis and I didn't. And so I'm sure our offer came in a lot lower. Um, and it was what we valued the business at, but it wasn't necessarily what the business could be valued at. Cause someone else said, you know what? We value the business at X, which is a lot more than what Ryan and Lewis put in because we know how to grow it. Whereas Lewis and I didn't, yeah. we didn't have the, the community skill set behind it. And I want that to be clear. That's like, you shouldn't win every offer that you put on because you shouldn't yeah. win every business and that, and that's okay. Even though it was an awesome business. And I felt like, well, I felt like we would have figured it out and been fine from the get go. We didn't have the right skill set to just like hit the ground running, take it off your guys' hands and then really push it and grow it. And, you know, we found that to be true as well. Meeting with you, I think you made some really good points about our business in that podcast. And, and uh, the, the, we found that to be true with other people that we had met with that may not have had the, the right skill set to take this business to the next level. Um, but with the buyers that came in, they had such a good foundation. They had their own marketing agency, which we had always kind of struggled and, and really did a lot of testing and things that maybe we couldn't afford to do. And, and they could come in and really just ramp what they were already doing with other businesses. And so they could eliminate a lot of the expenses that we were, we had that, that they didn't have to, to bring in, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a valuable insight, Ryan, too, of like, and for us, it was such a, it never sold, built a business that was successful to this uh, point, uh, nor sold a business. And so it was invaluable meeting with you and meeting with all the other people too, through the process of, of really, because, you know, the, the eventual purchase price is only one aspect, right. Of, uh, of, our confidence or of, of making that decision. Um, a lot of it too is, is the relationship is the vision that, that they set out. And I think to your point, the resources that they had of like, Oh, you guys, you guys know, understand e-com, you understand digital marketing from the, I think, I think the first phone call we had with, with um, the buyers was about the mission. I don't even think we talked about, Hey, the business, <laughs> like even numbers or anything. it was just like, Hey, we really love the mission. We really are interested in, in the doing good and the taking action and, and the community side. And so it just was this very uh, kind of natural starting point for that conversation to where I think it wasn't until the, at least the second call where we really dove in to numbers and financials. And so uh, 
I think to your point, Ryan, of just finding that through that process of finding the people who align, align in the right way um, is really interesting being on this, this side of it. I love that. You had mentioned earlier, uh, maybe it was before we hit record that um, everybody should go through the process of like trying to sell their business. Um, what, did, what did you mean by that? And what, what did you learn by, by coming out of this process, whether you were going to sell it or not? Yeah, I, I think honestly, it, it, so by going through the process of selling our business, uh, it forced Cam and I to really look at the business, to find any weak points, to really evaluate where can we do better? What, what about our business is strong and what about it is weak? And so even though it moved quickly to find the people, it was still six months really between like, hey, this initial conversation and, and, and selling. And so we still were building a business for six months. We still had kind of two, we talked about like having kind of two trains on separate tracks moving. We had to keep, keep the business running and thriving and growing. And then also keep this conversation going with, with the buyers. And, and I think putting the business or even just mentally thinking about, cause we've really started thinking about a year before on the fundraising side, we started to look at our business. We started, we found, and it really started to understand cash flows. <laughs> we were, we were so focused earlier on, on revenue, like, Oh, let's just grow the revenue, which is, is part of the challenge. But, but really, especially when COVID hit and it was like, we need every dollar. We need every single dollar saved. And then we need every dollar that is spent to be, you know, multiplied three to 10 X, you know, on, on what it's going towards, whether that's team or ads or whatever it may be. And so I think through the process of, of selling, I think we learned a lot about our business. We learned and and grew in significant ways. And I think we're able to hand the business off, you know, on, on an upward trend because of that reflection and, and kind of discovering a lot of things. Uh, uh, to your point, I, for me, we, we reached out to several brokers who took a bird's eye perspective of our, and an outsider's view of our business, uh, you know, because we're in the trenches, you know, we are, we are CEO, CMO, our business to us is priceless. Like we, we're the best business <laughs> in the world. And, and to, to brokers they are like, ah, eh, your business is good, but like, here are the things that people aren't going to like. And it was nice to hear that. It was really valuable to say, well, these five things on this bullet point list, these things, uh, a traditional e-commerce person would not necessarily want. They're going to come in. And these are the things that you can work on. Here are some of your, your major strengths. And, and that was really valuable. And, and I feel like we got that from you as well, Ryan, through, through email is, hey, here are, here are the things that we love about your business. And here are the things that we would need to fix if we came in. And I, that's where the real value for me came in is for me, the business is the most beautiful thing in the world. <laughs> but for, you know, for someone that's really looking hard at buying it, it's, you know, there, there are, there are mistakes, there are errors, there are gaps. And, and so that was valuable. Yeah. Every business has black eyes, right? And so um, there's no perfect business out there and that's okay. So what I, what I, how I approach it is just, you know, are you comfortable with the black eyes that this business has, or do you have the skill sets or the resources or the network to be able to fix those? Or, you know, just, are you okay with like solving those types of problems? Right. And so, um, and some people aren't, and some people are, and that makes it the right business for them. Um, now you, you all have your exit. You, you told me earlier, you guys are getting bored. So um, walk, walk us through, what are you guys working on right now? Where can people find you and follow you? What, what, what's the next step? You have an exit, you take a vacation, you come back and you're like, ah, I'm antsy again. So what, what's next for you guys? Yeah, we're, we're both type A. Sean and I both are, are ready to rock and roll. And um, yeah, it, I mean, we sold uh, the, the business in mid-May and it's now uh, September. And so we've had some time to reflect and really just kind of, I don't know, reprogram our brains a little bit. And yeah, uh, for me personally, um, I'm working on all things education. I'm, I'm trying to take in as much content and ed educate myself on uh, new skill sets, things that I, I want to start pursuing. 
uh, maybe in the in the finance or personal finance arena. Uh, I'm also looking, I think right now is a, a good time, a very difficult time, but a good time to, to purchase business, a business. And so I'm looking at um, maybe a little bit more of the unsexy business, the um, uh, in the trades possibly. And, and yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm currently on the lookout. Um, yeah. And you can find me, shoot, I have, I have a personal Instagram account. That's mostly pictures of my dogs and mushrooms and things, but yeah, you can follow me there. It's a uh, cam Jarman on Instagram and then Cameron Jarman at gmail.com is my, is my email. Yeah, and, uh, we, Cam and I have had multiple phone calls. Just like, what are you doing? Well, no, I don't know. What are you doing? And just, just kind of uh, figuring it out. I think for me, uh, just really trying to, yeah, figure out like what's next. I, there's nothing that I'm currently working on. I'm, I'm trying to also educate myself. I've been really diving into the crypto space. Uh, I've been buying a lot of NFTs and uh, looking into the NFT space. It's really uh, fascinating to me the way that community and culture and and kind of this ownership of of a brand early on and uh, just all kind of collide in this space in a very interesting way. So I'm trying to find a business within that space potentially or helping businesses potentially from a brand building perspective, uh, kind of bridge the gap to their community, whether that's through social, through e-commerce or through uh, potentially once I figure out the actual process of potentially deploying an NFT project to your community. Um, but yeah, I've been kind of talking with other business owners, talking with other friends uh, i just recently went to utah to, to reconnect with some people up there but um i'm on linkedin uh sean huntington you can you can find me there or uh uh probably twitter uh, another place to i think it's sean huntington underscore and just uh, i'm i'm happy i love talking about brand and so uh, i've actually put out on linkedin like if and i've had probably 10 or 15 phone calls with people that are just needing help with talking through their brand, talking through how to build their community. So I've been trying to just process my boredom and, and, and my kind of uh, path uh, by talking with other businesses and what they're doing and see if I can provide a unique perspective. So that's, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I love it. I love what you guys are doing because when I, when I had one of my exits, it, it buys you time. And sometimes what you don't have in life, yeah. is the ability to reset, take a step back and say, okay, what do I want to do next? Right. And so you guys had a successful exit. It allows you to you know, take some time off, uh, you know, take the summer off, whatever it is, you guys are four or five months in after your, your sale and say, you know, what do I really want to do? And you, you can focus on education, focus on your family a little bit, focus on those next yeah. steps, go on some hikes, clean up some trash, you know, mm -hmm. um, but what I, I made the mistake of just jumping in when I, and I had an exit, I just jumped into the next idea and the next idea and the next idea. And I found myself like three months later on this hamster wheel. I'm like, I should just take a step back and figure out what I, what I really want to do. And what does this look like down the road? And once I started to do yeah. that, I felt like I had a lot more purpose. And so, um, you all are blessed with an opportunity to, you know, maybe reset and, uh, figure out what the next opportunity is. So, um, okay, we'll link to all those there in the show notes. Totally. Everybody reach out to Cam, Sean, if you've got any NFTs to sell or if you've got <laughs> sell. these guys are your guys. Yeah, no doubt. Guys, thanks for being on the show. Hey, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Awesome.